Hey, hey guys. guys! We're so excited to be here with you tonight on a Friday night. You've got Lucy here yeah, and Sarah. And yeah, like I said, we're so excited to tune in um, with you again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're looking absolutely incredible. <laughs> thanks for having us over. Yeah, thanks for welcoming us into your house. So how do you family for us? Yeah. Hey, hey, mum and dad. And your pink pajamas look absolutely incredible. Love it. Uh, yeah, absolutely love it. And yeah, we're so excited to be able to connect with you guys this way. Um, and although we can't meet physically, we've got so many ways to connect with you guys throughout the week. And one of those things is on a Tuesday night, 5 p.m., we're going to post some sort of video, whether that's a um, fun activity or faith-based activity or just um, yeah, something to keep connected with you guys. And we also want you to be involved with that. So stay tuned to the socials and yeah to see what that's going to look like yeah so yeah we are sad that we're not able to meet with you guys on friday nights anymore but you know what we should be super thankful that we do have this platform uh so we can all communicate and interact with each other mm. um we just really encourage you when you're watching these videos don't watch them sort of like a a video i guess like try and be interactive with them because we do have worship coming up we have some games and some you know physical things where we do want you to get up with your couch and get involved and it will make it more fun for you and more fun for us and just know that everyone in excess is going to be doing the same even though you may feel a bit weird getting up in your lounge room doing whatever by yourself we're all doing it we Absolutely. all feel weird yeah so, it's a great way yeah. for us you know god can still connect with us even in our lounge room we don't have to be um at church yes. so yeah i encourage you to just really get um get on board with that and see what it could look like for you how about we get into it let's do let's it let's do it Hi guys, it's hey. Lucy and Sarah again. Now we are coming to you with a segment on what you can do when there's nothing to do. Which is a lot of the time right now. Absolutely, Woo. and things to keep your spirits high yes. and in a good mental health and a good state of mind. So, let's do stay it. Stay tuned. Now one really simple but really effective thing to do when there's nothing to do is jumping on the trampoline. And for those of you who don't have a trampoline, jumping on the spot works fine as well. <laughs> Another thing that is really good to do is just to lie in the sun and enjoy the weather. But make sure you don't forget your sunscreen. Another really easy thing to do is dust off those books on your bookshelf and open up a good book. most of your time by reading, by reading something that's actually worthwhile reading. You could even find a new hobby and brush up on some old sporting skills. Get active and walk the dog. Lucy, we don't even have a dog. Oh. You could write your friends a letter, like the old days. Then you can check the letterbox to see if your friend has written you a letter back. Yay, it's a letter! To Sarah from Wisconsin. <laughs> if it's not great weather outside, why not bake a cake? You could go for a jog. <laughs> Are you alright? How about you get back to nature and go lizard looking? Or bird watching. <coughs> or simply go for a leisurely walk. Well, that was hilarious and I hope you got a few handy tips on how to keep busy these next um, few weeks. Now, we're going to um, hand over to Bexar and she has some really awesome and inspiring things to share with us. 
Hey Excess Youth, I hope that you guys are doing really well and staying happy and healthy at the moment. Um, I know that it's a very interesting time and that we all feel different ways, but if you are feeling more anxious and stressed about it, I just really encourage you to connect to your small groups and connect to each other, um, probably not in person, but yeah, stay connected to each other and most importantly, stay connected to God and to the Bible. Um, I personally find that for myself, a lot of the time I will not be reading the Bible as much as I want to or praying as much as I want to because I find that I don't have enough time or I'm always rushing off to something or I'm too busy but I think that what's happening at the moment can don't come at me for this but can almost be a good thing um, I'm a big believer that there is a positive in everything and I think one of the positives in this is that we have so much time and we don't have all these distractions and places to be and things to worry about and we can use this to focus on God and we can use this to um, spend some time just sitting with ourselves with some worship music on and with our Bible um, or just ringing a friend and praying with them or your small group leader. Small group leaders love, love, love you guys. They love to get a call from you and to pray with you. So um, even just doing that and just spending time with God and in His presence I think is so important and it's something that at the moment we can do quite easily and so I really encourage you to do that. I was doing that this week and I found this beautiful song called The Blessing um, and I think it's really cool because some of the words from it come directly from the Bible like pretty much word for word um, from a verse in the Bible um, and it's from Numbers, Numbers 6 24 to 26 and it says the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Um, and I found that super encouraging this week, just to know that God has blessed us. Um, he truly, truly, truly has blessed us. And I find it hard to be at peace with things like this. And I think that some other people do as well and other situations, not just this particular one, but we all have situations in our life that we find it hard to be at peace with. Um, and I just found that so encouraging to know that God is looking at us. He is looking straight at us at us and he has a kind of peace that is so hard for us to understand on this world because it it transcends all of our understanding but um god's got it and he truly is the king over this situation he's the king over corona and oh there you go king of corona um and he's got this he truly has got this so i really encourage you to use this time um to just tune into god spend some time with yourself and with god um, connect to your small group leaders and to your friends and connect to God because I promise you that he is what is going to get you through this. So have the best week guys, lots of love. Apart from watching Excess Online, there's only one other important thing in life and that is snacks. So we're going to pass over to our leaders who are going to share with you their snack of choice when watching Excess Online. Hey guys, my favourite snack to eat while watching Excess Live are these chocolate digestive biscuits. I love them so much, they taste like a warm hug from my mum. Uh, on the snack meter I'm going to rate them 9.5 out of 10. So the snack I'm going to be eating whilst watching Excess Online has to be these brownies. They're packet mixes from Costco, which is quite the drive away. But if your parents happen to be buying their toilet paper in bulk from there, tell them to pick up these whilst they're there. I would get these a 10 out of 10. I don't think I've met a soul on earth who doesn't love these brownies, so I'm going to be eating these tonight. Hey guys, so my favourite snack to eat whilst watching these Excess Online would be number one, chocolate, because that's just a good time. And number two would be blueberries, because that is my go-to. My excess online stuff of choice would be eggs. They're easy to find in any store. You can do so much with them. Scrambled, poached and fried egg. Um, just easy to make, so my choice. When I'm watching excess online, I like to have a sweet and a savoury option. For sweet, we've got some marshmallows, which are nice and soft in your mouth. You can chew and hear the sermon. We've also got Maverick's favourite, some good old cheeses. Hey guys, hope you've had a great week. When I'm watching the Excess Online video, like I am now, there's always a particular snack that I like to have. And that snack is a bunch of frozen grapes. Other positive things that you can always just sit there, just feed yourself like a king. Kind of like that. So I know it's a bit weird, but I 100% would recommend it and give it a try. You won't regret it. It's a 10 out of 10 snack. 
Oh, hey. I'm just eating some uh, Johnny's popcorn. Uh, give about 9 out of 10 on the snack meter. But um, I'll see you guys at Excess Online. Hey, Excess. I'm just about to tune in to Excess Online for the night. But I want to show you my favorite snack. Juicy lemon. Absolutely delicious. Hey Excess, it's Lily here. I just wanted to quickly share with you some of my favorite snacks to eat while we're watching Excess online. The first thing that I've got here is I've got peanut m and So not everyone can eat peanuts. Some people are allergic. We've got some chips here. These ones are salt and vinegar. Is We've also got fruit chops. I love fruit chops. But then if you don't like fruit chops, we've also got chicken chips as well. Thank you, good sir. I love Nutella. Nutella is great. We've got more chips. Now we've just got chips galore here. Heaps of chips. Chips are lovely. <laughs> Make sure to share with us and tell us what your favourite snacks to eat while you're watching Excess Online. Sponsored by chips. <laughs> Alrighty guys, I think it's time to get into some worship. Don't forget to engage tonight, comment, react, let us know what you're thinking. We are so excited. I hope you are too. I close my eyes and colors fly. There's no hiding from your grace. I can't deny your eye for mine. And it's unreal teachers I was on the edge of deception caught up in my own hesitation until your love took over me Whoa. so I let go and I let love show me life like it's supposed to be an oasis here awaits us all the freedom I'm not afraid. 
Ray Access, it's Peter here. Uh, lovely to join with you today. Um, last week, Matt spoke to us on the topic of anxiety and stress. Uh, this week, I want to talk to you briefly about fear, about fear. And we promise our themes each week aren't going to always be on these kinds of issues. But we know it's a pretty hot topic right now. So we want to talk to you right at the outset about fear. But I want to do it in the context of Easter. Easter is only two weeks away, two weeks. And I don't know about you, but I, I feel it's kind of been pushed into the background lately. It's sort of dropped off our radar. You even may be thinking, Easter is the last thing on my mind at the moment. But I really believe it's important for us to, to be still, to refocus, and consider again. Maybe for some of us to, to reconsider the meaning and significance of Easter. When it comes to Easter... I think you'd probably agree that for the most part, Easter is a happy time. For me as a kid, we'd sometimes go away interstate for a holiday. We'd go to church and it'd be a real celebration. As a kid, we'd, we'd hunt for eggs in our backyard. You know, we'd look for signs that a rabbit had been there. You know, my, my parents never worried about getting photos with any dressed up rabbits. There were plenty of family photos, but no photos with oversized rabbits. And maybe that's why I have such a happy and pleasant experience. And memory of Easter. Unlike these kids. These kids with this particular bunny. It's as if their parents intentionally looked for the least happy and loving rabbit costume in order to permanently traumatise them. I have to admit those pictures are hilarious and terrifying at the same time. Now, even though your family's probably not going to make you dress up and, and sit one and a half metres away from a giant bunny this Easter, I think we all know that feeling of being scared, being fearful of something. I think we all know the way that fear can take away our happiness and our joy almost faster than anything. You've probably felt some sort of fear from an early age. Maybe for you it's a, a monster in the closet or a monster hiding under the bed. Maybe for you, you are scared of the dark. Sorry. Whatever it may have been, fear can wreck our sense of peace and calm. Now that you're a bit older, you've probably figured out, though, that you don't just grow out of your fear. Your fear grows up with you. Maybe it's failing a test or an assignment. Maybe it's being rejected by friends. Or maybe it's doing something embarrassing and it's shared on Insta. I assume it's very real for you. And the reality is that, that fear is on the rise. In fact, in your homes right now, chances are fear is determining the direction of a lot of our lives. So it's not something we can completely avoid. But here's what's really interesting about all of this. If we strip it right back, there's one fear that connects all of our fears. And it's the fear of death. The fear of death. You may be thinking, well, that's just, this just took a, a pretty dark turn. I was, I was just you know, worried about getting a bad grade, grade in history. Uh, I'm not sure what this has to do with death. Well, let me clarify when I say the fear of death, this is not just about physical death. It's about the end of something. The end of something. It may be a physical death. Or our fear may come in terms of the death of something we hope for. The fear of death comes down to losing something we think we'll never get back. 
And when you think about it this way, it's, it's easy to connect almost all of our fears back to this fear of death. And death, it seems final. So if our fears come true, like a friendship ends or a goal isn't reached or a dream dies and and then we get to the end of our lives to realise that death defeats us once and for all, that's just flat out devastating. There's no hope in that. There's no joy in that. There's nothing happy about that. But that's exactly where Easter comes in. Right in the middle of our fear of death. Easter's the time where, where followers, of, followers of Jesus celebrate him being sent by God from heaven, taking upon himself the punishment for every wrong thing we've done. Things I've done to others, to myself, against God. But then three days later, when nobody expected it, he rose from the dead. That's the good news of Easter. It changed everything. Jesus' life, death and resurrection has changed everything. And especially changed the life of a guy named Paul. Paul is one of the most famous Christians in history. And before he turned to Jesus, he spent years trying to scare Christians trying to get them to abandon their faith. He used massive fear tactics, even using death as the ultimate threat. But then then he met the resurrected, brought back to life Jesus, and it changed everything. Paul became so passionate about people understanding the significance of Jesus' death and resurrection. Paul's life, it was constantly in danger. But despite all of this, Paul seemed to live without this fear of death. He wrote these different letters and in one of Paul's letters, he's actually reflecting back on some Old Testament scripture that the prophet Isaiah wrote. And he says, death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? You know, it's like Paul is is taunting the very idea of death. Death, where's your victory? Death, where's your sting? In other words, Paul knew that when Jesus died and rose again, he defeated death. Death lost to Jesus. And do you know what that means for us? It means that death can no longer defeat us. The power that death has over our relationships, our reputations, future hopes and dreams, even our physical bodies, it's gone because of Jesus' victory over death. We no longer have to fear any kind of death because Jesus destroyed death once and for all. Done. If Jesus can defeat death. He can defeat the things you're afraid of too. Fear, it'll try and convince you that it gets the final word. That at the end of the day, it'll win. Fear will try and convince you that you're not good enough. That you'll never find a purpose. Or that your life isn't worth it. Fear will try to make you listen and obey it. But fear is only powerful if it convinces you that it's final. Fear will try to make you believe that nothing is stronger than what you're afraid of. But when Jesus defeated death itself, he showed us that nothing we fear is bigger than him. Nothing we fear is stronger than him. He showed us That fear, no matter what we're afraid of, doesn't get the final say. Easter means fear isn't final. But listen right now, you you may have fear. There may be something you're, you're feeling crippled by that 
There may be fear which is holding you back, fear in your relationships, fear with study, a career, employment, what that all looks like now, fear with making a decision which you know is right but still hard to do, fear to explore faith in Jesus, fearful because you're not sure what it means for your life and how it's going to change. Wherever fear has been holding you back, with Jesus' help, you can take a step forward today. And for those things I've just mentioned, maybe it's forgiving someone or apologising to someone. Maybe it's talking through your options with your parents or someone you trust and working that through of what it looks like now. Maybe it's asking your small group leader to, to help with something you've been afraid to admit. Maybe it's time to ask the real questions you have about faith in Jesus. This Easter, no matter what your step is, you can begin facing your fear because of Jesus. Fear doesn't get to determine the direction of our lives any longer. I don't know what your step is, but I do know this. If, if you're someone who believes that Jesus defeated death and you've sincerely asked him to lead you by his Holy Spirit, then you have the power, you have his power inside you. Because of that, you can handle whatever fear throws at you, no matter how scary it seems. As I finish now, I actually want to offer you an opportunity to respond. Because maybe for you, you have never said yes to Jesus. And so I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. God, I know that in my lifetime, I've not always lived for you. And I've sinned in ways I, I probably don't even know yet are sins. I know that you've got plans for me and I want to live in those plans. I pray to you for forgiveness for the ways in which I've sinned. I'm choosing now to accept you, Jesus, into my life and my heart. I'm eternally grateful for your sacrifice on the cross and how you died so I can have eternal life. I pray that I will be filled with the Holy Spirit and that I continue to live as you desire for me to live. I'll strive to overcome temptations and no longer let sin control me. I put myself, my life and my future into your hands. I pray that you work in my life and guide my steps so that I continue to live for you for the rest of this life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray that prayer, and made that decision for the first time to follow and trust Jesus. We'd love to hear from you. If you've been distant from God, and that prayer has been a, a refocus, a realignment of your heart towards God, we'd love to hear from you as well. Best of all, excess. Let your leaders know. Share this with your leaders. Share this with your group. They want to support you and help you grow strong in your faith in Jesus. XS, there'll be some small group questions coming up soon, which the small group leaders all have access to. So now's your opportunity to link in with them and engage with some of those questions for your own life, your own faith. God bless you, XS. Be strong in Jesus. Take care.